Oh, it's a good one. Oh, you guys will like this one. So I don't know if any of you guys know this person, but there is a YouTuber called Salmonella Academy, and I really like Salmonella Academy videos uh, in general. But I saved this one specifically because he made a video about scientific names and animals. And one of my favorite things to talk about is how stupid and bad the scientific names that we use for animals are. Um, we've talked about, like, how there's so many fish called perch that just shouldn't be called perch because they're not in the perch family. Or how largemouth and smallmouth bass aren't even bass. Um, there's a lot of fun, stupid Latin. Um, but I thought maybe he'd have a fun take on it. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they com- And they're paid not at all. Taxonomy is probably like one of the least paid and least rewarded fields in science. It's really cool because you get to discover new species, you get to name them, you get to figure out the relationships between living things, but... Uh, you know, <laughs> they get like no funding whatsoever. People are more wanting to do research in like animal behavior than in taxonomy itself. First, you got the big eight, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. Dumb kittens pushing cups. I don't over have a mnemonic. Which mnemonic did you guys learn? We learned a mnemonic in like biology one class in high school, I remember. I don't remember. Mine was something with kangaroos. It was like kangaroos something. I don't even remember what it was. Mine had kangaroos in it. I don't even remember them. I know the order just from like working with it a bunch of times, but I don't remember my mnemonic device. Bite. Donkey Kong's p Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus fucking, fucking God. Serendipitously. Okay. Okay. The way this whole thing works differs slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. King Philip came over from Germany swimming. I've never heard that one. Interesting. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one, cause that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one True. exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blanks, so they don't skunk count. Ape. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work. So dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, I had to explain that. I explained that to my grandmother. My grandmother thought that all dogs, like breeds, were wild. Like that there were just pugs out there in like the savanna, and that there were just like Great Danes and fucking all these fucked up dogs were just out there in the wild. She, I don't know how she possibly thought that. And I had to explain to her, no, we did that. We took the first dog and put it into all of these different things. Like, we are selective. She didn't understand the concept of selective breeding or, like, artificial selection. It was a really hard thing to explain to her. I'm going to be honest. It seems really simple and obvious to us, but if you try to explain it to an older person, it's actually kind of difficult. Eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sublevels in between. Yeah. Regions, cohorts, tribes, yep. series, divisions. And if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes. I didn't even know tribe existed until recently. Tribes are a big thing in insects or in bugs in general. So I've seen it a lot with bugs, but you rarely ever see it with fish. Legion and cohort, I've never heard of. Never heard of division or series. Actually, I've never heard of any of these. I've done a lot of like a decent amount of taxonomical work and like research into taxonomical relationships and I've never seen any of these. Now I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it Leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysaetos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in <laughs> Greek and Latin. The same it's like the, the, what is it, Tom Cod? Micro Goddess Tom Cod is the Latin name. Small Cod, Small Cod. <laughs> Essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup, 
Red triangle slogan. <laughs> I'm going on break. We call this thing a fucking unicorn, almost like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, <laughs> if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You it makes sense. Cephalopod makes sense. You got a head and a foot. You got the head and the foot. They just, they lack the body completely. Yeah. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history <laughs> History than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. Plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut. Yeah, this is a highly frowned, well not highly, it's frowned upon with fish naming, using any Latin or common names uh, after somebody else. But sometimes you can make like a part of the Latin name a reference to somebody else. So I am just hoping because I don't plan on going into like taxonomical work, uh, at least anytime soon. I am just hoping that w someone who loves fish, someone, one of you watching right now who's like really into fish and wants to become an ichthyologist will one day work as a fish taxonomist and will name a fish after me. That is my goal. <laughs> My only goal on YouTube, it's I'm not here for the money or the clout. I am here to convince someone to become an ichthyologist and name a fish after me. I can do a bird. I would take that too. I want a fish, but I'll re-reel. Anything named after me, I'll take it. It would be sick. Natropus Roy. Cody, that would be so sick. If there was a new Natropus named after me, oh, it'd be so beautiful. I would love that Natropus thing, except for one time. I would move wherever that Natropus is located and I would buy a house on the stream that you can find them in and fish it every day. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was <laughs> name a seahorse after him. Wait, guys, wait. Don't do that, I was kidding. Found and branded a while ago. Most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce. -a. The only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee. Looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus Jagarius. Name a bacteria after him. Didn't Germa get a bacteria named after him? Or was it a virus? I think Germa got a bacteria named after him. Or it might have been a virus or some it was something like that, but there's something named after Germa now because he had a scientist's fan. Since I have a higher volume of scientists in my audience, it should be more likely that one of them gets named after me, right? It's an old stone named after an old stone. Which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert report to announce the naming of apostatist Stephen Colbert. So <laughs> If that gives any of you epic biologists out there any idea. <laughs> Dude, Salmonell is doing it too. Literally everybody wants taxonomy named after he them. Is, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would. I already promised you to name a prehistoric thing after you. You did do that, but I don't know how if that's going to happen, but I will take it. Any, it could be, it doesn't have to be even a prehistoric fish. It doesn't have to be an, an extinct fish. Anything you can come up with. I will take anything. <laughs> do anything for the love of god i'll even take a lichen the world of politics is by no means <laughs> i will also take a lichen any bacteria or lichen i'll also take into this phenomenon obama alone has fucking nine as do a load of other presidents <laughs> trump's got a moth with funny why are there phenomenon. three obama fish obama alone has fucking nine what is the what is fish fish taxonomist's obsession with obama that is a really pretty darter by the way that is a really pretty darter i now i want to go catch at the estoma obama should we do an Avian Jay's Adventures finding Ethiostoma Obama? Where is it? Ethiostoma Obama. Tennessee. I was planning on going in that area anyways. All right. Well, maybe we'll go find the Obama darter. <laughs> Carter's got a darter. And Another so darter. There's, there's Ethiostoma. Wait, we got to catch all of the president darters. I didn't know there was an Ethiostoma Jimmy Carter. No way. Oh my God. The bluegrass darter. In Kentucky, we could do that in one trip. <laughs> in one trip, we can we can go south of Nashville and then move our way up here. We can catch the the Jimmy Carter darter and the Obama darter back to back. That's probably only like a two hour drive. Catching all the president darters. There's also this mite genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. I'll in take a mite. A I would take a mite. One of those little um. I don't even remember what. Oh, velvet mites. I'll take a velvet mite. Single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto. Fish would be cool, especially a North American fish would be super cool. Like a darter or a natropus would be amazing, but I'll take anything. Don't use my last name. If you are going to name after me, don't do Roy. Do just like Z A Q. 
fit a ZAQ somehow or like a KQ something. Fit it in there somewhere. Don't do Roy though. I don't like my last name very much. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild, I love wild subspecies. Horse, spotted, spotted panther, or my favorite, gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Just like, <laughs> yeah, it's the gorilla, gorilla that ever gorilled. Fuck you want from me. A closely related <laughs> role also states. Yeah, that was a good ass video. Just got to learn about a shitload of cool taxonomical names. I'm not complaining. There's a lot of, and he's funny too. There's a lot of them. Like, I mean, he went through probably like, I don't know, a hundred stupid taxonomical names, and there's probably thousands more. Whoa!